activated the 2012 London Olympics. She served as coach and mentor on the television shows The Voice UK and The Voice Australia. With six top ten singles, a double platinum selling debut album and four MOBO awards. This is British icon Jessie J. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us on Plant Based News. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to finally meet you. It's been great. I've been following your career for many years and absolutely thank love you your music. Thank you so much. Today we're at the Lincoln Plaza, London. Yes, we and are. And you just had an amazing experience with uh, Chef Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm basically doing a show tomorrow at Abbey Road Studio and um, with Hilton Honours, I had to have an experience and um, they gave me the opportunity to cook vegan food with mm. an amazing chef called Cyrus Todiwala, who has a restaurant upstairs. Um, and my, he's amazing, like, he's just opened my eyes to like, new flavours and mm. I have a bag of spices that amazing. are about to get used when I get home. The restaurant that you were just cooking in, right. he prepared a meal for you to cook together, right? Yes. What, what kind of meal was it? So he prepared a vegan Indian meal for us, Yeah. Um, something that he just thought I would like based on foods that I've guessed he's seen me cook or yeah. that he knows that I like. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he just made it up and just got it right because yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hilton got um, a chef to come in and basically give me a cooking lesson. Love it. Everyone that knows me or follows me on Instagram knows that I like to cook, yeah. often late at night and in bulk. Amazing. <laughs> um, so obviously, would like to say congratulations for joining the V-Gang. Thank you, yeah. V-Gang. Yeah, how does it feel? I can't explain how, how lucky I am to... Um, have my eyes and my heart opened to a lifestyle that has improved my life immensely very mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. yeah and how long ago did you discover this and where did it all start so about four years ago um, I've recently you know kind of been open about the fact that I got told by doctors that I won't be able to have children and even though I don't believe that and that's what they said not what I've said and all women and men go through f fertility issues mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's something that's very empowering for me to talk about and I had all these tests done and basically the long and short of it was you manage the pain that you get or you need to have a hysterectomy. Mm. I decided to manage the pain and I went and I decided to go nat do it naturally. Mm. So four years ago I cut out sugar from my diet, that was my first big thing um, to try and stop you know, bacteria building up in my body and just to be healthy and trying to do a cleanse and once I cut out sugar I then started to realise how much I enjoyed food when it was good for me and it was balancing out, mm. you know, everything, my health, my energy, my moods, my sleep. And then I was like, I want to stop eating meat. And I just one day just went to the wrong term, but cold turkey, mm. uh, cold tofu, should I say <laughs> now. Um, I just decided to cut meat and that mm. was about two years ago. And, you know, in the beginning, there was like the odd time when I'd eat chicken or I'd have fish when I'm on the road and it mm. took me a long time when I was touring to like really find like what I could eat and how mm. I could eat and mm -hmm. how I could sustain my energy for, for the shows. Um, so yeah, it's been about, it's been about, I'd say like a full year, but like two years was like 80%. Mm. And how does your friends and family and your partner think about this? this way of eating and living because a lot of people are quite afraid of it they yeah they worry they're going to waste away and we're going to become anemic and I, yeah i think that it, it's very it's very interesting and it's a really intense conversation because what kind of the normal uh i guess what the average person will eat is what is put in front of us in the supermarkets mm -hmm. in restaurants on menus and that's what we think we should eat and you know, even myself, I know that I was lazy. Mm. Um, and if you dig a little deeper and you understand that every body is different and everybody needs different uh, protein and, mm. and veganism is a lifestyle, not a trend, mm -hmm. for f firstly. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like it's, it's scary because it's new and mm. anything new means that people have to relearn something that's often years of something that they've not had to mm. change. Mm. And it's a lot easier than it feels. And I, and I know that feeling because I was in that place where I was just like, I can't be vegan. Like, you know, I need, I need steak. I need chicken. I need this. I need that. How can I live my life without pizza, without cheese? 
you know, and then I think it was a matter of me realising that it wasn't even about food. Like, being, being plant-based isn't even about food. It starts as food and then it goes deeper and it's about how you feel and then when you feel and you stand for something and then mm. it, it becomes about animal cruelty mm. and it becomes about the, light, the world and global warming and it, it escalates into this really beautiful... You end up feeling like a vessel of power that's actually improving the world mm. and not just yourself. Absolutely. So I'm gone off on a tangent. No, it's here, amazing. But. It's so true. Like people, one of the biggest reasons people go vegan is because it gives us as individuals yeah. an opportunity to feel empowered about yeah. the choices we make, the food yeah. we eat, the clothes we buy, the makeup that we wear, yeah. the fragrances that we wear, whatever. Everything has an impact and it has yeah. a knock-on effect. And I think when a lot of people do this, and that's why a lot of young people are doing it, is because they want change. They want to see change. Yeah. They want to feel that they are doing something for the world. Exactly. And for themselves. Yeah. yeah. You know, that we can only, we can be strong if we're healthy. Mm. And by being healthy means that we have to know what we're, what we're, what we're putting into our bodies and what it's doing. Mm. You know, I've, I've always had um, opportunities through health issues that I've had in my life where diet has been a huge part of my medicine. Mm. Not just, I, I'm, I, I'm not someone that just goes straight away, goes to, uh, What's the word? Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I would mm. say medicine, but that's the same, same word. <laughs> um, you know, and, I, and I, I believe that our minds and our, 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 our are so strong. Mm. I really, like, I get so passionate mm. about it. And, I, so and I get passionate about it because I'm not even fully there yet at mm. my um, full, real power of being plant-based mm. in my lifestyle. Like, it takes a long time, as mm. I said, for me, it's a lifestyle, so a life can't happen in two weeks. Mm. So, and it, everybody's journey with it and process with it is different, and mm. you have to be gentle on yourself and not feel bad if you fall off, and you know, just be gentle with yourself. Mm. It does take time. Yeah. And growing up, you were obviously you're from London. Yes. And what was the food culture that you grew up around? So I grew up in Essex, yeah. and my school was very multicultural. I grew up around so many different religions and faiths, and uh, culture and food and taste and parties and celebrations and I was very very lucky to um, experience Indian food, African food, Jamaican food, West Indian food like at my front door mm. you know street parties were you bring the onion barges you know you bring the jollof you bring my mum bringing <laughs> Sausage and mash. <laughs> um, it's great vegan sausage and mash. Yeah, now. great yeah. vegan sausage and mash now. Yeah. Um, lasagna and yeah. like Italian food, and so, and I was lucky enough that from a young age I was performing, so I'd be travelling into London and experience and seeing things, and I'm really grateful for that because I know that that's gone towards me being open to a palette of food that's beyond as I say what the normal mean to veg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, well, what are we supposed to eat? Like fruit. <laughs> no, there's loads you can eat. Yeah, because that's the battle, isn't it? We, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about veganism to people who don't know anything about the plant-based lifestyle, they have this vision of us just eating bowls of salad and yeah. everything that's green. But you get vegan ice cream, vegan chocolate, yeah. vegan sausages, vegan egg. And some of it's better egg. than dairy ice cream. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm saying this, I don't know anything. Mm. Like, that's how I do everything in life. I go into everything that I do saying, I do not know anything. Mm. I want to learn. Mm. Like... I, like King Cook Daily on Instagram, I was messaging this morning saying, where's the best vegan pie and mash shop in East London? Mm. And it's about knowledge and power and gaining understanding from the person that focuses on the food element of veganism or the animal cruelty or global warming. And I am at the beginning of this journey mm. and I'm not speaking out on it because I'm doing everything I can or mm. doing everything right or probably everything that I'm eating thinking it's vegan, there might be something that isn't that I need to learn isn't. Mm. It's about me trying to inspire a younger generation to love themselves, love their bodies and love the world. Mm. Mm, absolutely. So uh, veganism as a lifestyle or as a definition is a focus on removing the oppression and abuse 
of animals, really. That's yeah. kind of what it was created by Donald Watson. And the word vegan actually comes from the word vegetarian. It's the middle of vegetarian taken out and those two right. letters so join together. That. Yeah, so it's a kind of, it's, it's the idea of vegan vegetarianism, but with the other things that cause harm removed from the center and then that's what yeah. creates vegan. Um, a lot of people come into it from, from different ways, from health. I came in it from a health perspective seven yeah, years ago. Too. Yeah, and it, and it shapes, as you say, it shapes and changes in time. Growing up, what was your relationship with animals? Did you have any pets or cats or dogs? Mm -hmm. What was your kind of connections with them? My, I actually wish that I had a lifestyle that, um, is that macaroni and cheese? Imagine I just started <laughs> eating mac and cheese and it was all a liar. Um, <laughs> I don't. I do make it's, a good vegan mac and cheese Yeah, though. great. Growing up, I wasn't around animals as much as I wish I was. Mm. Um, my nan, my granddad. It's difficult in London, yeah, isn't it? They yeah, they had dogs. I was allergic to cats, still mm. am, so. Oh. That's a shame. I have to try and stay away from cats, even though I love, I love cats. Not so much as I love dogs. Yeah. But we would go to like farms and zoos and stuff. And mm. from a very young age, and my mum said this to me recently, I didn't like animals being in cages mm. or being in a situation where I felt like this didn't feel mm. fair. Mm -hmm. um, and as I got older, I remember actually I went to, um, uh, I've always had somewhat I've always had a lot of empathy, sometimes almost too much to mm. a point where... Um, it's overwhelming. It's, yeah, and yeah. so with animals, I have so much empathy. Mm. And for example, I had, a, I, have, uh, I had a French bulldog called Jackson and I traveled so, so much that my life at the time, he wasn't getting the lifestyle that he deserved. Mm. And now a friend of mine looks after him in LA and Animals, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to work out what I'm saying here, but like... Your relationship and connection with your... Yeah, my relationship with, with animals has always been... Quite, I would say quite, um, and this is very honest, mm. quite separated. Mm. And actually as I've gotten older and the more that I've put myself in situations where I see animals in their natural habitat and mm. actually, like I swam with dolphins on holiday once. Mm. And I kind of looked into the dolphin, uh, dolphin's eyes and I avoid being near animals because I knew that my empathy, it was almost like I was avoiding it. Mm. Not for any reason that I you know, would want to eat the animal, but <laughs> I remember kind of swimming with dolphins going, this is a real thing. Mm. Like it has a heartbeat and like- Just like you. Like yeah. a personality and it mm. can't speak. So does that mean that I then have the power to be above it mm. or to treat, treat it as, something that isn't as magical as, as a human. Mm. And the more I experienced that, and then I went and saw, I went to um, a zoo uh, with friends on holiday once, and it was the worst experience that I've had. And that really made an impact on me. And that was like, that was the week, that was in 2012. Um, but as I've gotten older now, I put myself in situations where I level myself with animals. It sounds really, really strange, but I've not been asked this question before. But like I recently went on a trip to Iceland mm. and I just sat with these baby lambs mm. and just put, and I went to their level, not, not like, mm. a, you know, like I sat down mm. and like ha let them be the powerful one mm. with me sitting there. And I'm like, how could I eat this? Well, you're connecting with their <laughs> yeah. individuality. A yeah. lot of people, when they have meat served to them or, or flesh served to them. Yeah. They don't see an animal, they see a chicken leg exactly. or a steak. Exactly, they see a meal, they see yeah. a picture in a recipe book. The, yeah. That's the thing, there's a, there's a big detachment from, yeah. it's like when someone buys a fur jacket. Mm. You have to understand where that came from mm -hmm. for it to be in your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And from there to here, mm. do you agree with this little middle part here? Mm. Because I guarantee that, though, you, if you actually looked into it, mm -hmm. and that's the thing, a lot of people eat meat and do wear fur and do, you know, not subconsciously, you know, subconsciously, I guess, and not on purpose, um, uh, promote animal cruelty. Mm, without realizing. Because they don't know. Mm. And that's why I think that these, like, I'm so grateful for your Instagram page and your, your social outlets because it's Thank educating you. people like me and anybody else that 
wants to be better and mm. do better. I have to say, I was quite surprised when you responded to my message, because obviously yeah. being a public figure, you have thousands and thousands or millions of people following yeah. you. Um, so I just know from our Instagram, I struggle to keep up with the messages. So thank you for responding. It's no, I'm, really, I run my yeah. own Instagram and I don't right. like anyone else doing it. So, right. and I feel like it just throw, not all my DMs come through and there's yeah. always the ones that I should that me, mean something to me always come yeah, through. Yeah. And this is the first time I'm publicly talking about yeah. it. People know, but yeah, sure. well, can we you see saw my it, feet now? We, <laughs> <laughs> we saw it on your Instagram. It appeared you put vegan on your Instagram. And of course, we're always looking and keeping an eye yeah. on these things. Uh, one of our teams sent it to me and I was like, oh my God, Jessie said she's vegan. Because obviously people eat vegan and then they become vegan. Yeah. They're very different things. Yeah. Uh, we talk about being plant-based or being vegan. And the difference is plant-based is just food. Well, that's why I say that for me, it's a lifestyle that yeah. I'm trying to obtain. And yeah. it's not a diet. Yeah. It's not a cleanse. Yeah. It's not a trend thing that I'm doing yeah. for two weeks. Like It's a lifestyle that I really, really want to keep. Mm. And so I know if I open my heart and my mind and my voice mm. that... I want other people to inspire me and teach mm. me and like today that was they were like what do you want your experience to be and I was like I want more knowledge mm. on what I can cook. There's a mountain of stuff yeah. out there. Yeah, so it's incredible. Much. Um, with regards to food, you've been yes. sharing your recipes and your yeah. cooking on your Instagram, on your stories. What have you, how have your fans responded to all that? My fans at the beginning always kind of used to like joke because I'd always cook really late at night. So yeah. I'm always jet lagged and I'm yeah. always hungry and I like to cook. I've, I've got no concept of quantity. <laughs> at all like I will always cook for 10 people mm -hmm. um, and I think that being in hospital as a kid I was saying this to the chef upstairs being in hospital as a kid I never could eat what I wanted to and I would actually stay up late I should probably shouldn't say this but this was years ago they won't know who they are <laughs> I would stay up late and the nurses would order takeaway mm -hmm. and so I would get to like eat different foods and then I was like anywhere I am and obviously I travel constantly I'm mm -hmm. always everywhere in the world. I want to know how I can sustain my choice and my lifestyle as being as being vegan mm. anywhere in the world. Because there was times where I'd go somewhere and it was just meat and cheese everywhere. Mm. And now I know that if I go to some, a shop or a supermarket everywhere I go and I buy these five things, I can make something cold in my hotel room. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it's about me what was the question? I've totally gone off About money. How, your, how your fans have responded and yeah. kind of, yeah, how they've responded to this. And now, <clears throat> it's funny because I, I really do feel like there's stigma, there's this, this stigma with veganism where it feels, people feel like Judged. vegans like kind of look down on everyone else mm. and like, it's like this, and it's really not that at, at all and it's like expensive to be a vegan and mm. it's bougie and, mm. you know, and I... I love that word bougie. Yeah, just straight <laughs> bougie and I'm like... It's really not, it's, yeah. it's actually... Rice and beans aren't expensive. No, at yeah. all, you yeah. know, nearer lentils or vegetables. Mm. And it's about reprogramming everything that you've mm. learned, you know, and it's scary. But my fans, I've seen so many of them experiment and whether it's for a day or a week or a month mm. or their whole lives, mm. to know that I am somewhat inspiring that or mm. being a part of the inspiration for them mm. to do that um as, as i always say with me to my fans and my fans to me the, the respect is always mutual mm. um and they've been great they've been so supportive and it's great yeah and i'm sure you're inspiring them as well as you I say i hope so i hope so so a whole food plant-based diet which is fruits and vegetables, nuts, legumes, seeds, yeah. uh, in an unprocessed form. When people eat like this, we've been, uh, there's huge amounts of science and uh, studies that are now showing you can reverse heart disease, which yes. is a number one killer of humans on, on the planet today. Mm -hmm. You can stop and reverse type two diabetes. Something like half of America will be diabetic in the next few decades. You know, with this way of eating, you know, it's, it's crazy that more doctors are not talking about it, that it's not more in the mainstream. It is starting to happen that way. You're starting to see it more. Because I think, you know, we need to be a society and a culture where we see health as a gift. Yes. As, some, as, a, as a precious gift. Because, yes. you know, illness, not only does it cost our economies a lot of money, but it, it's, it's traumatic for our families yeah. and our friends and ourselves, of course. Um, there's lots of conflicting information out there. You know, some people say, eat this and not this, eat this yeah. and not this. Where do you get your knowledge from with regards like nutrition? Have you got a nutritionist or are you reading books? How, how are you gathering your knowledge? So I, um, 
Plant Paradox was a book that I read very early on when I started to go vegan and that really helped me understand where food comes from, like where it began. Um, and that was a really massive educational book for me to like start my journey. And then there's just been, for me, it's been blogs and Instagram pages and um, people that I've mm. met. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very lucky that I meet a variety of people everywhere I go. And I actually went on holiday and I met this nutritionist um, and she was the one that told me to cut out sugar. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to uh, the UK and I went to see another nutritionist that deals with um, plant-based, plant a plant-based plant -based diet being, doing exactly what you've just spoken mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with a heart disease when I was nine. Mm -hmm. So um, I have Wolf Parkinson White, as does my dad and my granddad who died four years ago. Um, and so when you're young and you experience, like for you just said that mm. you went vegan because of health issues. When you're put in a situation that you don't choose, mm. it's different. It's, like, it's almost like I'm grateful to be ill mm. because I don't think I would actually be as healthy as I am now as if mm. I wasn't because I wouldn't have abused my body mm -hmm. uh, in a way that I see other people that don't have kind of early stages issues when they're younger that aren't their mm. fault, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It does. I know what I'm saying, but it does <laughs> kind of make sense in my well, mind. Well, you, you, you cherish your health a lot more, I think, because you don't yeah. take it for granted because you, yeah. you've, you've experienced illness. Well, you don't do to your body yeah. what you already have. Mm -hmm. It's not self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. It's something that you're born with or that's, that you just have. Mm. So, yeah, I, 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 um, I think doctors are scared to talk about it because it exposes something that gives the patient the power. Mm, mm -hmm. um, as I say, there's there's a whole political there element is. to it. We could talk for hours about the yeah, power of medicine. Yeah, and it, you know, but I just wish that I just mm. I just um, I try and I try and inspire people in the in the softest way, which mm. is I cook for people. Mm, it's the best way because. Especially I, baked goods. Yeah, like, yeah, ba yeah baked goods, 100%. Um, but ve like vegan mac and cheese, I've mm. served that to like my friends that mm. would be like, ooh, I don't like vegan food, mm. and told them afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no way. And I think that's been my, my personal <laughs> power is that I can back up what I'm saying with mm. food. Mm -hmm. And I think people would sit and talk about veganism and they understand it, but then they don't know where to go and get the food. Mm. And I think that a lot of people... Um, really underestimate how special and magical and powerful they are. Mm. Agreed, yeah. And people are afraid of missing out, aren't they? Afraid of losing those dishes and those meals that yeah. they always have and have yeah. all the time. Um, you know, those breakfasts with grandma or those you know, birthdays with you know, their parents. Yeah, I mean, the one conversation I have the most is, well, what do you eat for breakfast if you don't have pancakes, eggs and bacon? And I'm like, I eat for, I don't eat for gluttony anymore. I eat to eat, to eat, eat well, health. I eat yeah. for health. Mm. So if I wake up and I want to go, I'm going to have some hummus, some spinach, some cashews, some dates, an orange, and some slices of vegan mm -hmm. like meat, mm -hmm. that's what I'll have. But you could have vegan pancakes, exactly. you could have vegan bacon. Yeah, and you, you can, can have, have vegan eggs. You could have vegan eggs. Scrambled tofu is my yeah. favorite thing in the morning. Yeah. And that's healthier choice. That's more a whole food rather than these yeah. processed foods. Yeah. Because I think there is a perception that vegan food can be expensive and it's a bit junky, you know, a yeah. bit junk food. And that is true. Like seven years ago when I went vegan, there was nothing. There was right. no like junk foods or anything. Now there's almost too much. Yeah. You know, there was nothing on the internet. The only thing on the internet, I think, was Peter, you know, yeah. the charity and, yeah. and, and blogs that were more like a cry for help than anything else. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because it was a panic. Yeah. You know, I think that that's the thing is that uh, being vegan and global woman and everything mm, that mm -hmm. it falls underneath it, it was panic. And I think now people are realizing that instead of going here, people are going here and going mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and going, let's start from the base, from the beginning. Like when you wake up, what are you putting into your body? Mm. Because what you put into your body affects your mind and mm. your thoughts. Your thoughts become your character and your character mm. become your actions. Absolutely. Since I've been vegan, I'm softer, I'm calmer, mm. I'm less anxious. Um, I feel more peaceful, mm. I'm happier. Um, 
Those are great side effects. <laughs> yeah, and it and it's affected my whole life, my career. So I was going to ask about you. So you're on a on a show, The Voice Kids, yes. uh, and with Will I Am is also vegan as well. Yes. What's it like being on a show with another vegan who's it's, super passionate? Yeah, and me, outspoken. me. Yeah, me and Will have been friends for years. You know, I've known him for like almost over ten years now, and we did the first season eight years ago, which mm. always blows my mind when mm. I think about it. Um, and he went vegan recently, and I saw him change for, for like so dramatically. He's level a, 10 vegan, yeah, isn't he? It's like, yeah, he's like... <laughs> he wears it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loves it. And like, again, it's because he's proud and it makes you feel strong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, he inspires me to be more outspoken about it. But mm. I'm still finding my feet. And I, I'm, mm. I've learned in my life to get connected with something in a personal way before I feel like I'm giving it, mm -hmm. you know, outwardly. Yeah. So this is, this is a great thing for me mm. to do. It's like a step. But no, being on set with him, it's great because like when when we have snacks, like they bring snacks to the chairs in between shots because we're in the shots for, the chairs for hours, mm. and I'll be like, "What have you got?" And he's like, "What have you got?" And we like share <laughs> snacks, um, and I'll cook food and bring it, and he'll have some at lunch mm. break, mm. and yeah, so Amazing. it's great. And I got him a vegan cake for his birthday oh, recently. Wow. Yeah, he's so outspoken. It's hilarious. We love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Before I let you go, um, if you were stranded on a desert island and all you had was a pig for a friend, <laughs> but you had one vegan dish, one music album, and one book, what would you take with you? One album. One music album. One Soul book. Weekender. Okay. Totally random, but that's what I would want to listen to because it's varied. Um, one book. Probably an empty book so I could write what was going on and what had happened because mm -hmm. I need to write something down. I think if I was stranded, I'd want to make a diary as opposed to consuming something else. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one? A vegan dish, one vegan dish. That, that's all you could eat. I could always have. Uh huh. <laughs> Some sort of curry with rice and a mm -hmm. salad. Nice. Like, just keep it simple, but like, can I change the curry every day or is it? You can, it's an island, so there's loads of like... Okay, so I'll have like plantain curry yeah. or like yeah. chickpea curry or... Yeah. Amazing. Butternut squash, butternut squash. Great choice. Squash, squash, squash. <laughs> thank but you yeah. for joining us on Plant Based so News. Much. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And seriously, thank you. Like, thank you for being such an incredible platform for thank people you. to be educated and like, learn and be inspired. Like, I am... This is me as like like a human like a human being. Mm. You know what I mean? That's like on my start, platform yeah. it's nice like to be able to put this as Jesse J, but like yeah. for me in my life, like being vegan has um changed my life dramatically and my health. Mm. And I'm just so grateful for anybody that gives their life to help other people change theirs.